everyone. Danny here for another Tough Love Tuesday. You may be noticing that my energy is a bit more calm today than my usual bubbly self. And that is because I am just landing back at work after four, well, it was more actually like five <laughs> incredible, powerful, connected days offline at a yoga retreat. So I went full on immersion into um, some really deep practices of connection with self and spirit and um, yoga and all and nature and all these beautiful things with some amazing humans. So I'm still riding that high. I'm, I'm still in integration where I'm processing everything that really came out of this really powerful weekend for me. And um, this is really inspiring today's topic. And it's this, this idea um, and this conversation around connection with self and what does that mean? And how does this actually relate to our relationship with food? And um, you know, the tough love in this is that you are most likely completely disconnected from yourself and from your true nature and your true identity and who you really are at your core, what you believe in, and all of these um, really powerful pieces that keep us grounded and keep us, you know, um, really calm and centered and all these beautiful things that when we have them, it's a lot easier to make healthy, loving choices. And when we don't have that connection to self, when we don't have that deep understanding and awareness of who we are and, you know, loving who we are, we tend to fill that void that's created within energetically with things like food or Netflix or staying busy all the time or drinking, right? Um, all these, these, these addictive behaviors and patterns that come out of that. So this is really, I mean, a huge topic and something that I am really feeling called to speak more and more about, especially after this powerful conversations that I was a part of this weekend uh, for myself. And so for those of you who are a little bit confused, <laughs> what is she talking about connection to self? Uh, you know, I, I really want to hopefully make this make sense to you because first of all, if you are disconnected with yourself, you might not know it. You might not have the awareness around it, which is why I'm bringing this topic up right here, right now. I mean, you know that these Tough Love Tuesdays are all about building that deeper awareness. And, you know, huge shout out and actually thank you to so many people who have been going through the brand new uh, three part video series all around healing your emotional connection to food and emotional eating. I've been getting some beautiful emails from people who have been going through that powerful training that I just released a couple weeks ago. Um, I'll, I'll drop the link in the comments or above, above this video again, in case you haven't gone over and registered, it's completely free. Um, but a lot of the feedback that I've been getting from that is, is kind of this, this, wow, I had no idea that this is where my cravings were coming from, or I had no idea that this emotional piece or connection was actually driving um, my choices around food. And, you know, it was, it's really beautiful for, for me to see people, women like yourself having these awareness epiphanies, because that is really where change starts from. And that's really why I want to bring awareness right here, right now today. And, and more in the future, as I, I begin speaking more about this and my own journey into connecting with myself, um, you know, because it has been such a profound, found piece of my journey and healing my relationship with food, but really what I'm doing is healing my relationship with myself. So we get really pulled into this world of mayhem and chaos and stress and responsibilities and all the things to do. And, and, you know, what society says is successful, right? We need to get the really important job and get the white picket fence and the fancy house and all these pressures that um, or these ideals that we get pushed towards in our culture through media, through, um, you know, just our family or parents and what they teach us and all these things. And very rarely do we take a chance to really step back and reflect on, um, you know, where that those decisions and those choices are actually coming from, from inside ourselves. So yes, this conversation we're having right now is a very uh, deeply connected and spiritual one. And this is really important. And it, more important for me right here, right now to say, 
um, that this isn't about any one religion, okay? This isn't about any one way of being or way of doing. There's room for all of it. What I'm getting at here for each of us, and it's going to look so different for each of us, and this is the beauty of not getting dogmatic or stuck in one way of thinking and, and you finding what works for you and what helps you connect with you. For me, a big piece of that has been connecting with my spiritual self and the universe and my my place in this world and energies and mother nature and all these things that I see around me as proof of magic and proof that I'm not alone. So whatever that looks like for you, beautiful. Use that as a tool to help you really spend some time reflecting and getting clearer and clearer over time on what lies within you at an energetic place. We get really stuck in all of our identities, our external identities, right? Like maybe you're a wife, maybe you're a mother, maybe you're a, a CEO, you know, maybe you're a sugar addict, you know, all these labels that we put on ourselves. And obviously we can have a big you know, we can go down the very big rabbit hole of identity and how that does need to shift for a lot of us. But coming back to yourself is one of the biggest ways to get clear on your authentic nature and who you really were born to be and who you were really born to show up as in this world. And if this last year and a half has taught us anything, it's that um, you are probably disconnected with that, with that sense of no deep knowing of who you are and, and what you're here on this planet to do and how to show up. For me, it's been such a gift this last year and a half because it's really helped me deepen into that understanding for myself and get really clear on my role here to show up as a bright, shining light to raise the vibration of the planet and everyone that I come in contact with. And I hope that you're absorbing that from me every time I talk, every time I show up. Um, I know all of my clients are, are absorbing that and loving that from me. And I know that that's my purpose here. So the more that I connect with that inside myself, the easier it is for me, tying this back into obviously a relationship with food, the easier it is to not numb out or escape or try to fill a void within me because I feel that wholeness from within. I'm hoping this is starting to make sense. If it's not, that's okay. Sit with this. Listen to this again once we're done here today. You know, really sit with it and let it subconsciously sink in. Sometimes these big concepts or these big conversations take some serious time to integrate. Um, the last couple days, I've had some really profound, deep conversations with some very profound human beings and teachers. And I know that I'm going to need weeks, if not months, to really integrate everything that got absorbed into my subconscious this weekend and how it actually plays out in my own life and what things it's going to guide me to want to shift and change and and from that. So that's okay if this is all not really landing yet for you. Just allow this to sink in in some way and allow yourself to sit with it and ponder it. So some of the things and I want to, of course, leave you with some some beautiful tactical tools, because the more you can begin to connect with yourself, um, the the more, like I said, being healthy and making those loving choices becomes easy. And I think this is one of the very powerful root causes. And I know a lot of people don't Actually, I don't think anybody talks about this when we talk about sugar dependency and addiction and food, you know, relationship with food and uh, binge eating and, and all of these patterns that come out, you know, in, in using food in, in some sort of manner that isn't just for nourishment. So we need to start with this base level connection with ourselves. Obviously a very big topic, but something that's, you know, really coming up and coming through for me after the powerful weekend that I had. And, you know, it's important to remember to trust the process in this and, and go slow. This isn't about figuring out who you are by tomorrow. I started this journey for myself about five or six years ago and I'm still unfolding and still discovering and I probably will be until the day that I die. So this is a process that unfolds and it's such a beautiful journey once you start really throwing yourself into it and saying yes to opportunities that come your way, just like I did this last weekend. It was about a month ago, a friend of mine said, hey, have you heard about this retreat? And I said, no, but I, I just knew that I had to be there. So I signed up, I paid for it and I went and um, it was profound and, and transformational. I'll never be the same again. And like I said, I'm still processing everything that came through for me from that weekend. But the more we put ourselves in those situations to, uh, to deeper in, deepen into that connection. So for most of us, the best place to start, and I wanna give you some, some ideas here. And obviously there's so many more things, but the best place to start, maybe if you've never, tried connecting with yourself is just to spend time with yourself, like intentional time. So not just lounging out watching Netflix, but actually take yourself up for lunch, 
without distractions. Okay, so this is a really important part. This, this practice of connecting with self has to start with stillness. Stillness is actually where all of our answers are. <laughs> I really learned that this weekend. In that stillness, we, we get the answers. We, we uncover what, what we need to uncover for ourselves. So spend time with yourself that isn't distracted. So maybe you're going for a nice nature walk or you take yourself out for lunch or you sit in the bath with some soft music on and just sit with your thoughts. Maybe you meditate, right? Maybe you do yoga. Um, you know, whatever that looks like for you, spending time with yourself. And I know that I've shared a lot about my practice that I do, you know, once a, once every three or so months where I take myself away on a Danny retreat. And that intention of that is for me to connect with myself. And I'll take myself camping or to an Airbnb. And I know um, if you've been following me for a while, you've seen me do that and practice that. Um, and it's so profound in those moments where I get to spend a couple days with myself in stillness, uh, you know, having dance parties and having long leisurely baths and going for walks and just being with me um, in a in a really still intentional place. Obviously, lots of journaling as well and reading and different things, um, but stillness. OK, so wherever you can find that stillness and whatever that looks like for you, maybe it's not meditation. Like I said, maybe it's a walk or maybe it's just sitting out on the deck with your cup of tea in the morning and just listening to the birds and watching the sun come up and the world start to wake up. Um, you know, these moments of stillness are so, so powerful and they are really, that is the path to connecting with yourself. And then on top of that, you know, if you want to take it to the next step and that's where I am in my journey is really putting yourself in situations where you know, you're going to grow. So things like retreats or ceremony or sacred circles, or, um, you know, working with, with healing practitioners and energy healers. Um, you know, these are all things that have been a part of my journey, having really deep conversations with, with other people who are interested in in their growth and their evolution as well um so really taking all the opportunities that you can in your life to put yourself in situation where you can learn from teachers you can learn from healers and you can absorb uh what they're teaching you there's a thousands of modalities out there as well to help give you a better understanding of who you are. I recently just had my human design chart read. Really fascinating. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and look it up. Um, it was really powerful to help me understand a little bit more about my authentic nature and who I really am versus who society has told me I need to be. So I can start to peel back those societal conditioning and really tune back into uh, my light and my joy and the silly Danny that I'm here on this planet to be. So there's lots of tools like that. I mean, the, you know, the world and the world is endless. Those are just a few of the things that I have done for me and my personal growth. And every time I put myself in those situations or I say yes to those ceremonies or, or uh, that healing, you know, practice, I connect deeper with myself. That as well as my morning routine as well, which I'm revamping now and remotivated, re-inspired after this weekend. So just a couple ideas to connect with yourself. This is really about stillness, about putting yourself in situations where um, you can learn more about yourself, right? Maybe there's a teacher involved, maybe it's signing up for a course, right? And maybe it's downloading that free three-part video series that I created for all of you. Uh, a powerful place to start, right? You're going to bring more awareness to your life, your beliefs, your patterns, your emotional connection to food and your emotional health. You know, when you can connect and, and really build awareness in any area of your life, self-awareness, that helps you connect to self. So I hope that this has sparked something in you. I know I'm going a little bit over our 10 minute timeline today, but I think this is such an important topic and something that I could speak on for hours and maybe one day I will. Uh, but for now, I just want to plant the seed for all of you to really start thinking about this and starting to bring more awareness to where you are right now, very disconnected from yourself. Do you ever spend time alone with yourself? Uninterrupted. I'm not talking about Netflix for four hours at the end of the day. I'm talking about intentional time with yourself. Do you date yourself? Do you take yourself out on adventures? Do you really spend time in stillness with nature yourself um, to process and to think things through or to journal? Um, and if you're not, this is your call and your invitation to do more of that and to start this journey to understanding who you are and start peeling back those layers so that you can begin connecting and filling up that void, that space that you may be feeling in your chest, that emptiness, filling that up with, with love for yourself, filling that up with connection, with community, with nature, filling that up with a deep grounding and connection to who you really are. And I think that is the answer to 
dare I say it, all of life's problems. <laughs> um, I think it really does start there and uh, it's such a beautiful process. So I invite you all to um, share with me in the comments below one thing that you're gonna do this week to, to build that deeper connection with yourself, okay? Really simple, really easy homework. <laughs> What's the one thing that you're gonna do? Maybe it's do a meditation. Maybe it's go for that nature walk, right? Maybe it's take yourself out for lunch. Whatever it is, just to be in stillness and connection with yourself, uh, let me know in the comments below. And thank you all so much for tuning in. I saw a bunch of you tuning in live. I really appreciate it. And I cannot wait to keep this conversation going. So thank you again. And I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye, everyone.